Welcome to the Kill Shot MMA podcast. It's UFC Edmonton, Moreno versus Albazi. I'm Sniper, that's Monk. We're going to break down all 14 fights in this card, talk some DraftKings strategy as well. Do me a favor, smash that like button, share with your friends. Monk, I think we're kind of looking ahead to UFC 309. I think pretty much everybody is. A couple decent little fights in this card, and more importantly, some money to be made on DraftKings. Um, 14 fights opened up a lot on GPPs. Uh, how is your early work research going? We know what else. <clears throat> excuse me. DraftKings did something very different than what they usually do. We have 14 fights. We have like three or four doubled salaries. The highest salary is 9,200. Thank uh, God. With, with 28 fighters. They have not done this. I don't even know the last. I mean, we get doubled salaries here and there. This is clearly like planned and they, they did it. So, which is kind of odd. So it, really opens up your gpps for basically anything this week i do like that i think a lot of dogs are going to be barking canada who knows it could be all canadians win or all canadians lose i guess we'll find out you know i only have a couple dogs actually so let's um you know what let's go ahead dig in we'll dig into it let me pull up our screen here break down all the fights and let's go let's just start with the first fight of the night jamie lynn horth taking on ivana petrovich Horth is the favorite at minus 210. Petrovich, the comeback, is plus 180. Your DraftKings salaries for this one. Horth is 8,800. Petrovich is 7,400. Monk, you take the first breakdown right after I tell everybody also that the fight goes to decision prop is minus 350. Should see the scorecards in this one. Yeah, that was the big thing I was going to mention. Uh, it's tied, well, at least according to Bet Online, as of like three, four hours ago, it's tied with another fight we'll talk about as the worst odds to finish inside the distance at plus 275 or go to decision at minus 350, like Sniper said. Um, not interested in Jamie Horth. What are our salaries here? Sorry, I wasn't 88 paying and 74. Yeah, dude, you're paying 8,800 for Jamie Lynn Horth. I don't know what you're doing. Right. Um, yeah, she's, I don't, I don't have to spend a ton of time on this. 67 points against Haley Cowan. Uh, she takes the L against Veronica Hardy, and I really like what I've seen out of Hardy, but we're not talking about that. 60, I mean, less than two and a half points a win. Like I said, 67 in that win. Petrovich scored very well against Na Leon. Guys, what the fuck are we doing here? I'm probably not playing either one. I'll trust Vegas at the plus 275 to uh, go to decision. Yeah, I don't know. To not, not to, to finish in, inside the distance, rather. Um and yeah, I'm not too interested. If I'm picking a side, it's the underdog. It's the cheaper fighter. It's Petrovich. However, when uh, Horth lost, she gave up like 58 points or so, 68, something really low. So that's no a little bit. Of, it's a little bit opponent based, though. Look, it's it's True. a pretty straightforward breakdown. Horth, I think, is bigger, stronger, better on the feet. I, I mm -hmm. just Horth should win the fight. I also agree. She's probably going to score like shit. So I'm going to pick Horth as the old straight up pick, but. Petrovich is the better DraftKings play one. You can consider be on her all the steroids. Yeah, you can consider her for a cash game punt. And Petrovich, yeah. in the fight, she does win her path to victory, which I don't think she can pull off, which is why I'm picking against her, would be the grappling. She can get takedowns. She can win the fight. I don't think she's going to be able to in the fight in the spot. That's why I'm picking Horth. But she has more DraftKings upside for the salary and her path to victory. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's a pretty... Uh, dog shitty start to this card in terms of DraftKings um, strategy. All right, let's move on. Let's talk on, you know, we got roll through these Canadians here. Chan and Helliger taking on Cody Gibson. Gibson's the favorite, minus 190. Come back on and Helliger around that plus 160. Mark your DraftKings salaries in this one. Gibson is 8,700 and Helliger is 7,500. Fight goes to decision is minus 210, but I'm okay with that because Cody Gibson, um, not okay. It's an okay fight, better than the last one. Gibson has grappling upside. That makes him DraftKings viable. And Helliger is a dog. Yeah, he's a live dog. Gibson isn't great, but I think and Helliger is going to be on his back. And if he isn't, at minus 250 to see a decision with 14 fights, 7,500 salary, whatever it was, it 7,500? 7, yeah. Yep. I still don't think he's going to score enough. Even if he wins, he's going to score 80 points. I don't think he's going to get you there in GPPs. It's a tough road for this one. It's one of the ones where picking the favorite has more DraftKings upside, but there are probably other spots on the card. I'll probably I'll probably try and be about field weight on Gibson, and there's other dogs I want to take a stand on 
rather than in Helliger. So give me Cody Gibson in this spot. Monk, what do you got? Well, for our wiki capper friends out there, it's not going to work on this one. Cody Gibson's one and four in his last five. He's only win a uh, win against Brian Kelleher. Okay, that's fine. Um, he looked decent against Kelleher, scored a shitload of points too, 111 uh, in that one with the first round finish. Also, it should be noted, his strength of schedule much, much better than Chad and Ann Helliger. In fact, in just the UFC, it's 10 points better, which is extremely uh, significant uh, the way I do the rankings here. And Chad's strength of schedule is really, really bad, like 14 points under the average. So, I mean, he's beaten Chara Lampos, who has zero cardio, uh, and he beat Jesse Strader. So we're not impressed with that either. I like Cody Gibson. You're getting him much, much cheaper. I think you paid 9600 if I'm not mistaken, for Cody Gibson against Brian Kelleher. This week you're getting him for, cool. what do you say, 87 Um it's And the last the thing I'll say, what's that? <laughs> That's quite the price to, to be. It's, yeah, it's quite the price head. difference for sure. And it, he paid off the last one, the last ridiculous price. Everybody said, nobody's playing Cody Gibson. He's way outpriced. And then he, you know, comes through for us. Last thing I'll say is Ann Helger gives up a whopping. Uh, I think this is the one, two, three, fourth worst number on the card. 4.81 points per minute inside the distance. And as we said, that's Cody's main uh, weapon of choice. I like him to pay off his salary this week. Let's go and let's look at the next fight up. Serhi Saidi. See, I, I got I should look at this. Serhi Saidi taking on Garrett Armfield. Saidi minus 155. Armfield plus 135. DraftKings salary. Saidi's 8,600. Armfield is 7,600. Fight goes to decision minus 145. A little bit more likely of a finish, but still. Projected to see all three rounds. Monk, what you got? Yeah, that's interesting on this card. Most uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, fights, according to Bet Online, are slated to finish inside the distance. Five out of 14, guys. So we've got quite a few, and most of them are Mike Malott and up. Four of them are Mike Malott and then the main card. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, especially with the salaries we have. Look, this is probably one where I'm not a huge Armfield fan. We didn't really see. I mean, the City and Tavares fight was pretty fucking good. Um, City landed like 5.2 strikes a minute. He scored about two points a minute. Uh, I, did I say points? I meant five strikes a minute. Scored but two is, points. Is Tavares any good? That's what I mean. Like he didn't yeah. do much against him. He got knocked down. Like he put up an okay score That's for a losing good. score. But I think he was the favorite in that one, and that was the rematch of uh, the Contender Series. Armfield has beaten Kazama and Brad Katona. Not the most impressed, but his strength of schedule is way better than uh, whoever I just talked about, Ann Helliger. I'm probably picking Saidi to win, but I'll probably be like 20% on both. I'm not touching this one in cash. A lot of these ones I that aren't going to... Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, that's... I'm, I'm leaning that. 20% or less is what I would say. So I'll pick Saidi probably, but I'm not confident. Yeah, I'm gonna go the other way, mostly because I th I think that there's I think Armfield undervalued in this spot. Saidi's got a little bit of hype here. He's also the the Canadian. He's okay, True. but Armfield's oh, Armfield's fought the better competition. Like Armfield, the win over Toshiomo Kazama. Yeah, he lost to David Onama where he got submitted, but Onama is kind of a freak. And that fight against Brady Heastan was good, and he nearly won that fight. Um, you know, he had a knockdown like. Is he a world beater? No, but I think he's a little bit undervalued here. Saidi, really, I don't believe it yet. And regardless, this is one where as a toss-up, it's kind of similar to Horth Petrovich, but I'm just more confident in Horth, obviously, because mm -hmm. Saidi, if he wins, is going to be striking. We're expected to see, see the scorecards at the more expensive salary, and I think he's going to get a little bit over-owned. Just not a ton of interest. I, I, I'm I more on the side of Garrett Armfield. It's also interesting that the market is Looks like the opens now. So bet online's always got the weirdest openers. Try yeah. to look. It's actually FanDuel Armfield getting bet up a little bit. You know, the, the numbers closing a little bit. So you know, the market tends to be pushing it that way. I tend to agree. Got your DraftKings pricing. It's not a fight. Again, there's there are underdog spots. I promise that I, I have more conviction to load up on. But Armfield a secondary play because I'm going to pick him to win. He's the kind of guy. He's active enough. He's got four he, UFC fights under his belt. He probably doesn't score as you know great in a win, 
but he's also more alive to a finish than at least the first two fights uh, in terms of the underdogs. Like, would it really surprise me if he knocks out uh, Sarah Heesidey? No, not not even a little. So I do think there's some value here in on field. I'm going to go and take him straight up, but it's not a confident pick. But like I said, I believe in the odds value there. Let's go ahead and, and finally we get a talk. We get a fight. We are going <laughs> to play on DraftKings, but I have to throw there's there's a, there is a little bit of concern here. Yeah. You see on paper, Alexander Romanov, Rodrigo Nascimento. Pretty much a pick them now. About minus 110 mm-hmm. apiece for these big mamma jammas. Um, Nascimento is 8,300. Romanov is 7,900 on DraftKings. Fight ends inside the distance, minus 170. So on paper, what I was getting at in the lead in here is that you see mid-range salaries, and you see heavyweights with a ton of fin- with, with, who typically finish, right? Yep. DraftKings has got, or not DraftKings, sorry. The odds market kind of tells you why you should be worried. Because typically a fight like this between these heavyweights, minus 400, <laughs> and inside the distance, minus 500, neither one of these guys are especially high output. They're, they're not. So it's it's I'm checking up short of an all-in fight. Because you can get a heavyweight slop fest here. So this is not an all-in fight. High exposure fight, especially in the context of this card, because we just had four in a row where we're like, eh, I guess so. This is definitely one to target. I just wanted to back off the all-in. In terms of a pick, I'm on the Nascimento side. Romanoff's got 29% takedown defense. Both these guys want to grapple. Romanoff will just lean on people's necks when he was just smashing people. Nascimento is a little more well-rounded, and he's by far the better Brazilian jiu-jitsu player if he gets on top. I actually think there's some value in a Nascimento wins uh, by submission prop. I did want to find that because it was a little bit niche. That's plus crazy. Plus 475. That's I like crazy. this plus 475 number quite a bit um, by, by Monks. I mean, even a minus one. Uh, yeah, I like that number a lot. So – I'm on the Nascimento side. Play both sides in GPP. It is a kind of load up fight. I'm just, again, I'm just checking up short of that all in number, but give me Nascimento. Monk, what do you got? Yeah, I don't have much to add here. We got Yogi Bear against King Kong. I'm on the Nascimento <laughs> side as well. Um, four and one in his last five is only L's to Derek Lewis, which he took into the third round, who we'll talk about later on. Romanov has some big issues. So you mentioned, I'm getting ahead of myself. These two are definitely going to grapple. And that's why the number is just minus 170 ITD or whatever it was when it could be, you know, if this was two Romanov fights ago, it would be like minus 400 and Romanov would be 8,700 and we would uh, get tons of value on Nascimento. But we've seen the holes in his game. He has zero cardio. Have you seen this guy train? He they're, Talk about playing touch butt in the park. That's exactly what this guy's doing. Uh, Nascimento should have the better cardio. He's got the five-inch reach advantage as well, uh, which will help him. Um, especially when Romanov gets tired and he just starts shooting for these odd takedowns. Nascimento should be able to sprawl and uh, and get the job done, I think. He has a definite chance. That 475, I said it was crazy, my reaction. I'd like to see it more around minus 600, but, yeah, I think that is a great You mean great plus 600? Call. Or uh, Yeah, plus 600, excuse me. I think that's a great, <laughs> it's great minus call. 600. You need to uh, yeah, I'd, rather, I'd rather pay more to get less. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I agree. Nascimento, I think there's value on 8,300 this week. I, I'm thinking second round sub. I think Romanov dies uh, in the first. Yep. And the problem is you can get a ground and pound TKO. If, yeah, if that's true. And, and lose. But, it, you know, I'm taking a stab at plus. Well, what's Nascimento round two? You don't have to look. I'll look later. Oh, that's what I would Nas- think. Nascimento round two. Let's go. We'll, we'll pull it up quick. We did that fight relatively tidy here. Nascimento wins in round two plus 650. Bam, there's my plus 600. There we go. There, where, where is, boys. You want to put them together. Nascimento. Round two uh, subski is plus 15. Now we're just getting greedy. Maybe a little, little, little dime on that and a little, a uh, little quarter on the other one. Let's head, let's head on back here. And let's, I'm interested in your take on this fight. We've got Jack Shore and Yusuf Zalal. Zalal minus 250 ish. Come back on shore is plus about 210. Fight goes to goes the distance is minus 250, right? Yep, minus 250. Should see a finish here, at least according. Oh, sorry, 
the scorecards, not a finish, should see the scorecards according to Vegas. And Zalal is 9,100 to come back on Jack Shore, 7,100. Monk, you are first. Yeah, that's interesting. ITD line plus 195 uh, is what I got. Both these guys score well over three points a minute. Well, Jack does in his career. Lately, it hasn't quite uh, been like that. Um, and when he loses, he's been uh, giving up points. Let's see. The second round loss to Brito was tough. And the Ricky Simone loss also tough before Ricky Simone apparently fell off of a cliff. Wiley Coyote style. Nobody knows what happened there. Um Zalal's fucking impressive, man. Since he left the UFC and came back, this dude is it's all of, he was a decision fighter. Even before his first decision uh UFC stint, he was getting decisions. There were it was rare that he would have a finish. Then he gets, you know, out of the UFC, and all of a sudden, since then, and since his, he's come back, it's KO after KO after submission after KO. This dude is a different fighter. I don't know if that has anything to do with the uh, lack of USADA, but my god, uh, I'm gonna take Zalal here and what is his uh number 9100 that's what I like about this week Th these guys that don't usually score well have the chance to pay off the salary where they might be 9600 um uh in another week is he not like the most the, is he the widest no it's probably Mike Malott Zalal's up there as being the widest favorite on this card at, pl at minus 250 yep. um put up a hundo against Quarantillo put up a 93 against Aaron's Jack Shore is liking to get finished when he loses, guys. I love Jack Shore. I don't know what's going on. Uh, hopefully the camp knows that they're fighting at featherweight. Uh, that's an inside joke for the, the Shore boys out there. But, yeah, I'm going with Zalal. I they think there's a chance he gets it done. And uh, I love I love every time that happens. I, I, I hit the like every time. Um, but, yeah, Zalal seems like a fucking mo I don't know what this dude, what happened to this guy, but I'm on the Zalal side here till he shows me otherwise. All right. Let's let's – I get it. But Jack don't look like a tank lately. I tell you what. Yeah, and here's here's the thing though. Yusuf Zalal beat Billy Quarantillo, who did not look right in that fight, but fair play to him, beat him right. Mm -hmm. And then he beat Jarno Aaron's. Are we are we really super impressed that 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 he you know submitted I mean, Jarno Aaron? Like, are you? We, are you impressed with Shore beating Makwan Amir Khani or well, Ludwig Sholinian? Here's here's the problem: is that so? Jarno Evans finished, finished I'm gonna say one and three in the UFC. Yusuf Zalal has got sixty percent takedown defense, right? He was to, he was taken down by by Demond Blackshear, taken down twice and lost to Sung Woo Choi. Yeah, and, um, and then and then you're back, you know, years ago where you know something called a Jordan Griffin took him down, even that though he won that fight. Craft. Austin Three Lingo. So my point is, is that I think Zalal is still like, I think we're a little bit too overhyped on him. Has he come back to look great? Yes. Jack Shore is the best fighter he's fought since coming back, clearly. And I would argue probably the best fighter he's fought other than obviously Ilya Taporia and maybe Billy Quarantillo. But the way Billy Q fights, I feel like it's just day by day. Like it's just what Billy Q is going to be able to take that day. But again, he beat him. I just think stylistically jack shore presents a few problems and while yeah he, <coughs> we're really gonna like he lost to ricky simone are we really gonna be mad about that like yeah i know ricky simone has fallen fallen off but okay he lost to ricky simone and he lost to joe anderson brito who is fucking horrifying like i you have to hold that loss against him the same way you to the same extent you withhold you hold the uh Taporia loss against the law it doesn't fucking matter for these guys it just doesn't yeah they have good losses but bad wins for sure so you know jack shore is going to shoot takedowns uses the law yeah he took down jarno aarons and submitted him did, did jack shore is different ken's the law's wrestling hold up and regardless even if you disagree with that you're going to pick the law and i'm clearly going to i'm going to take jack shore my upset play of the week you know 7100 i think the wrestling and kind of the recency bias is going to catch up here, and I'm going to take a Zalal win. But even if you think that Zalal wins, is he going to score good? It's a big number. He's not going for the takedowns. You need a finish. Is he going to put the volume on and finish Jack Shore late? You're really looking for a very specific outcome to score well on DraftKings. Obviously, it's a high-variance game. It's come back to burn me, but I'm going to be underweight for sure. Mm -hmm. To Yusuf Zalal. There's a lot more spots, other spots that I want. And that is at the distance price. And I think he's got a tough wrestler in front of him. 
got to show me one more time. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But give me Jack Shore to spring the upset on this one. Moroccan witchcraft for the win. Yeah, whatever. Something happened. I don't know what it was. Something happened. It, it was it was who he was fighting. I mean, he 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 lost to Ilya Taporia, Demond Blackshear, who's who's a good fighter, and he came back and he got. I'm telling you, something right was was not right with Billy Q, but I can't. I don't want to sound like I'm totally discrediting Zalal, but then so he gets the win, and then Jarno Aaron's. I don't. I need one more, and maybe and maybe he'll put up one more. Sure. It's going to be a good fight, I think. You know it should be a good fight? Charles Jordan, Victor Henry, because Charles Jordan fights like a psychopath, and I'm here <laughs> for it. Jordan is minus 120. Henry is plus 100. DraftKings salaries, it's the mid-range fight. Jordan is 8,200. Victor Henry is 8,000. Fight goes to decision, though, is minus 250, and now I'm just kind of like, whatever on this fight. Um, I actually think there's a little bit of value in the fight ends inside the distance number overall. Get plus 200 for a finish. The way Jordan fights, Henry's got a lot of volume. Jordan is aggressive. We've seen Jordan hurt and dropped plenty in his career. Mm. Mm. For those reasons, I'm picking out Vic. I'm picking Victor Henry because I think he's a little cleaner on the feet. Both guys have a little bit of sneaky upside here for that inside the distance number and their mid range salary. So I'm cool with it on DraftKings mixing these guys in. This is that fight. You know, earlier you said maybe you'll go 20% on each guy. This is kind of that fight for me, mid range. And I think it's a bit sneaky because of that big inside the distance number. But the way Jordan fights, I think there's some sneaky upside for points overall. I will be on the Victor Henry side. Monk, who you got? Yeah, I agree. I can't back Jordan even if, even in Canada. Um, Victor Henry might have six losses, but not one of them is a finish. This dude is tough as shit. Uh, as long as you don't like kick it. See, I hope- the only time he was finished, his nuts were kicked into his stomach. Yeah, and, and no Bashirat, one believed him. And Basharat was like, you're lying. Like, are you fucking kidding me? And the refs and the doctor, I think it was. You're lying as well. It's like, what the fuck? And <laughs> then they watching. stuck with it on Twitter for like weeks after that. It's, it's such a weird look. Uh, I mean, you kicked him right in the balls, man. Uh, All right. The MMA gods gave him a big fat L for that one. <laughs> yeah, they did. They sure did. Um, yeah, I like I like Henry. I don't have much to add here. Charles Jordan is too uh, unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get. Um, two and three in his last five, and one of those wins is Crone Gracie. The other is Ricardo Hamos, who uh, uh, just loves getting subbed lately. So, yeah. I uh, loves it. He loves it. So, yeah, Henry's also got the uh, little bit better of a strength of schedule. Um, I mean, the Jordan uh, Silva fight was, you know, not great for Jordan. Um, and that was not too long ago, actually. He got KO'd four months to the day from today ago. That sentence probably didn't make sense, but I'm sure you can figure it out. So June 29th, meant. June 29th, when he was KO'd by uh, one of the fighting nerds. So give me Victor Henry, tough as shit. I think that the, if there's a finish, it's going to come late and it's going to be on the Victor Henry side. You're all about those fighting nerds. Any chance you I get to mention the fighting, the fighting nerds, nerds, you're like, I fighting love them. nerds, fighting nerds. Somebody please fight Mauricio Hoofy. No one will fight him. I will. Number, if you pay one, me number one bullshit. I'm going to need about $2 million, please. And I'm going to leave the cage. Actually, no, I'll do it for 20 grand. I'm going to leave the cage immediately. <laughs> like that box. Like the boxing man. Just start tapping. But I'm going to act tough as shit the whole time. <laughs> and then just shake your head. Nope. See ya. Yeah, but you know what? I'm going to do this just so I don't get finished the fast in UFC history. I'm going to sprint around in a circle for as long as I can. <laughs> the second he touches me, I'm going to yell, tap, 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 tap. By but verbal miss- submission. And the first thing I'm going to do is tweet I lasted longer than Ben Askren. Oh, yeah. That's for gonna- sure. <laughs> be the first thing I tweet. <laughs> All right. Let's talk Ariane. It's Lipsky here on Fight Odds, but it's Da Silva now. Ariane Da Silva taking on Jasmine Jazdevicious. Jazdevicious is minus 225. Lipsky is plus 190. Fight goes to decision, minus 230. And your DraftKings salaries for this one. Jazz Devicious is 9,000. De Silva is 7,200. Monk, you are first. Well, man, I think you got to play some uh, some double J here. She's looked fantastic. Uh, we all know she put up like 170 against, I mean, someone with the worst defense of all time, man or woman in the entire UFC, and Priscilla Cachuera. Uh, But Fatima Klein had a bunch of hype on her coming in, and Jasmine shut that shit down uh, pretty well. I like that. She's scoring very well when she wins overall. She's busted 100 
uh, several times. In fact, 40%. Is that right? Yeah, 40% of her wins uh, have been over 100. Please don't uh, ever she, say busted while talking about it. Busted 70%. I, I don't know what I said, but yeah, it just, you know, after so many shows, you gotta, you gotta try to keep it, uh, keep it fresh. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, De Silva does have a good takedown defense, 71%, but man, Jasmine controls 93% of all control time she's in. And this isn't like a minute or two here or there. She's in control time positions constantly, and she is raining down blows uh from those positions scoring a ton of points in fact 107 on average has got to be one of the best numbers in the entire women's flyweight division um absolutely love it here i'm going with uh double j and also when De Silva loses she gives up 99 points per loss which is a lot for a women's fight so there's a lot of points on both sides of this the offense for uh jasmine and the defense given up for silva so give me jasmine and i think the price is pretty good at 9k yeah, uh, she just got taken down five times by Kareem Silva. Uh, yep. And admittedly, Kareem Silva is a better grappler, I think, than Jasmine Jastavicious. But I I would argue Jastavicious is bigger, more physical, and probably a better wrestler. She's got 13 uh, takedowns it, in her last five. I don't know. Like, Ariana De Silva, I don't think there's enough time for you to improve your wrestling defense that much. I think we got a problem here I, for her. I like Jastavicious to score, score a bunch. I don't need a finish. She could get one at some point, though. I, I think she's going to... I don't know how Ariana Lipsky stops the takedowns. I love Jasmine Jastavicious at this price. There's good draft. King's upside as well. I am all about this women's fight, despite there not being a good inside the distance number. Like Monk mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of those on this card. Mm -hmm. so luckily, we got a good women's fight to target. And yeah, I'm all about... As, I've never I've never heard somebody call her Double J, but I like it. Give me Double, double J. J. Shout out to Jeff Jarrett. Um, yeah, and I won't ask you now because we haven't talked about the fight. We're about to, uh, but I'm interested who you ask like me more. anything else other than this. I don't want to talk about this next fight. Ask me okay, anything. Maybe else. It's not, I don't know who's next. Okay, it's the fight after next. Uh, I'm interested to see if you like Mike Malott more than Double J. So let's wait and find out. And while you're waiting, hit the like button on this video. Uh, please do anything other than make me talk about Iman Zahabi and Pedro Munoz on DraftKings. All right, I'm, I'm going to get through this. Here we go. Somehow. Oh, this has got to be what those girls who work at the house of ill repute feel when a big fat guy walks in. They're like, oh, God. All right. Not another one. This is how I feel. The hobby's minus 120. Moonhouse is plus 100. Fight goes to decision minus 350. Cool. Oh. cool. DraftKings yeah. salaries here. 8,300 for Moonhouse, 7,900. For Zahabi, look, it's two guys. And the reason why, I mean, take jabs. It'll be a high-level technical fight, but it's the fuck this fight on DraftKings. They're just going to strike. Neither one is high output unless somebody lands a spinning back fist knockout or just some pot shot. I don't see how anybody scores here. I'm going to take the, I mean, a ri every MMA fight to risk because one punch, big points, night's over. But mm -hmm. uh, more often than not, this fight scores terrible. I'll be way underway to both guys in terms of a pick. Give me a mute hose. I'm not really a believer in Ayman Zahabi. Um, I'm, I'm just not. I think he's slightly, you know, he's won four straight, but he's beaten, you know, Javid Basharat was the best one. Close fight, won it. Could be similar to this fight, but other than 60 he beat points. A, yeah, he beat a Richie Long, can't, can't strike. He beat Ricky Tercios, not good. And Draco Rodriguez, not good. Like, he beats who he's supposed to beat and got a win against Bashara, but did not score well. Munhos is good, man. Munhos is good. Might draw out a little more volume. But overall, Munhos is also slowing down at this point in his career. I'll take Munhos, but it is not a confident pick. I'm more confident that I don't like this fight for DraftKings. <laughs> how, about, how about for you? Uh, basically agree. I'm probably picking Munoz when my uh, notes come out because, yeah, Zahabi. Look, the only way he scores well is if he gets these weird first-round knock knockouts against people that uh, either can't strike or don't have any defense, i.e. Orichi Lang and uh, Draco Rodriguez. He scores crazy points and breaks the slate in both of those, but when that doesn't happen, he scores 51 in a three-round decision or 61 in a three-round decision. This is consistent. Uh, it is known, as they say in Game of Thrones, you cannot play him. Uh, even if you thought that Pedro's like, oh, he's 38, there's a chance that he could get knocked out in, in the first round. Well, he's never been knocked out. 
So I wouldn't think that anyways. Also, um, yeah, Zahabi, uh, I would not expect, I would not expect that from him. Oh, and Munoz has never, never been, uh, been knocked out. So I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just, then that's what I was going to say. I got sidetracked. I was looking at a different stat. If you think he's going to get the first round knockout and I don't think there's a chance you look at the price tag, he's the second most expensive underdog, Eamon Zahabi. So I'm not interested. I'll yeah, I'm not interested. End of sentence. <laughs> Give me Pedro Munoz. It will be a striking battle. These guys might just kick each other for the entire fight and score, you know, 35 points in a win. <laughs> just kick each other. They like might just that. kick each other. Yeah, they might. It's it's totally possible. All right, let's let's move on and let's talk about double M. Mike Malat, Trevin Giles. Malat is minus two fifty. The comeback on Giles is plus two ten fight ends inside the distance is minus 250 draft king salary here malad is the most expensive fighter at 9200 the comeback on giles is 7000 monk you get to go first for this one yeah i probably like uh mike malad here over officer giles look uh giles six pro losses all six finishes so we're getting hints at, at why you know we see that wide inside the distance line and mike malad uh, a big finisher as well. In fact, every single one of his wins uh, is a finish. Giles is two and three in his last five. The only wins he's had is Luis Koske and Preston Parsons, who I do actually rate Preston Parsons a little you know, better than Koske, but uh, not too much. He just got smashed up by Carlos Praches, who we get to see fight again very soon. Speaking of the fighting nerds, uh, but that was there back in, every uh, time. Exactly. That was back in, uh, back in February. So not as close as uh, whoever I said got knocked out four months ago. But I'm on Malat, man. He needs to rebound. He needs to get a finish. And Trevin Giles uh, can be finished. So, yeah, in fact, that's all he does when he loses is get finished. So give him a lot. Like I said, this week he should probably be 95, 96, 9,700 with 28 fighters. But for some reason, DraftKings is helping us out, and we get him at 92. So don't go nuts. Not an all-in fight or, or fighter by any means. But I like Malat to get a finish. Four and a half DraftKings points per minute and 107 per win are good numbers here. All right. Shimon Smotrowski, Mickey Gall, Johan Lanese, Adam Fugit. Those are Mike Malad's UFC wins. True. He got top 15 contender checked. I won't call it, I won't say fraud. I don't think he's a fraud. He got contender checked by Neil Magnus. Big time. Pretty aggressively. Especially in that third round. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was bad. So in Canada. On the other hand, Trevin Giles. The UFC done a really good job in trying to, I think, getting him a lot a winnable and finishable fight. By the way, that fight was in Edmonton against um Magny too, wasn't it? Wasn't it a hometown fight? Where he, I'm pretty sure he got smashed in Edmonton. Might have been. I think this is back to back fights. I'm gonna go look at I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it real quick. I don't quick. know where like in Canada. But... It was no, it was in Toronto. All right, it was in Canada. Canada so... is just Canada to me. <laughs> the Great White Sorry. North. <laughs> um, Trevin Giles got 71 percent takedown defense as well. I'm not slamming in Malat because Trevin Giles is tough. Probably better than anybody that Malat has beaten. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how Malat's going to handle this first UFCL. Is he going to be a little hesitant? He needs a big score. I'm with you. I like Malat. I think he's better everywhere. Got more power. Can probably wrestle. Giles, stay at range. Use his distance. You know, he can keep it, make it a close, dirty type of fight. Maybe up in, you know, maybe in clinch positions. I'm picking Malat. And I just have that little bit of hesitancy. Like, is, is he really, is he? Just top 15 checked, or are we going like UFC mid level checked? He looked great, but he had some good matchmaking. What are we going to do here? Number for a finish is pretty big, I think. Unfortunately, because the only other fighters in the 9K range are Jasmine Jazz Devishes and Yusuf Salal, I'm going to be playing a bunch of Mike Malat. Mm -hmm. I, I, I addressed them, and I'm not, it's, I did not put the fade marker next to Trevin Giles. I think the only Fade markers I have right now. One's going to be kind of, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little lead in here. One of them, you should probably be able to guess. It is um, Ariana De Silva. Not a fan there. Mm -hmm. 
the other fade marker I have out right now is Dustin Stoltzness. Yeah. So we can, we can talk about that one here in a second. So I'm willing to mix in a little bit of Trevin Giles, but the pick does have to be Mike Malott. All right, let's move on here. Is the next? It is next. This fight here is, is off. Carlos Fernandez versus that guy. Yam Jurgle Tumendemberl. What are you doing? Who's? I hope I didn't just cast struggling? a spell on some shit. The lights just flicker in here. Fucking uh, hell! All right. Instead, we got Mark Andre Barrio taking on the aforementioned Dustin Stoltzfus. Barrio is minus 200. The comeback on Stoltzfist, plus 170. DraftKings salaries. Barrio is 8,900. Stoltzfist is 7,300. Fight ends inside the distance, minus 125. Slightly there. Look, Stoltzfist is 2-4 and four in the UFC. He's been finished in three of his last, in, in his last three losses. When Mark andre Barrio fights, the fights are full of fantasy goodness. He knocks people out. He grapples. He's high volume. He just goes, 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 goes. I don't think Stoltzman's going to stand up to it. I think he's better everywhere, is uh, Barrio. I think he's got huge upside. When Barrio, Barrio's losses, by the way, if you wanted for anybody who likes the wiki capping, <laughs> geek, geek, I yeah, rattle here. these off for everybody. Okay. His losses are Joe Pfeiffer, Fluffy Hernandez, Chris <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> Chidi and Jaquani is a large, large individual. You got to go. And then you go back. He's you know, the worst I'm, one on that list. Yeah. You go. If you go further back in his career. Now, this is where 2020. He's a different fighter than when he. Andrew Sanchez, strong back in the Rock day. Rock and witchcraft. Yep. Chris Diviaco, Jung Young Park. And then he had a no contest against Oscar Pajota, but he won that fight. Like, those losses are ridiculous. And then he's beaten. Abu Izatar, Dalka Lagiambula, Jordan Wright, Cuban Missile Crisis, Julian Marquez, and Eric Anders. And he finished Julian Marquez. Jordan Wright, everybody finishes, whatever. Um, and he finished Abu Izatar. But he just goes. Like, at middleweight, that fight, he had 109 strikes against Julian Marquez in two rounds. Okay, you want to say it's Julian Marquez? <laughs> sure. Middleweight, 118 strike, strikes against Dalkia Lagiambula. That's a lot for a middleweight. He throws, volume, wrestles, Stoltzfus his ass. I don't know how chalky he's going to be, but for me, Mark Andre Barrio is a core play on my list. And on a on a card that's got a lot of dicey spots, I have to take a stand somewhere, and this is going to be one of them for me. And we'll see if it ends up biting me in the ass. How about for you, Monk? Hundred percent. I love Barrio here. Uh, I don't trust Stolzfus at all. I still can't believe he beat Puna Soriano uh, and scored 137 points. That's fucking insane. I think this fight is going to look uh, more uh, like the Julian Marquez Barrio fight here, which is good if you're backing Barrio because he finished him in the second round. Second round, so he only gets 70 points for that. He put up 120, almost 120. And you mentioned about his uh, his insane volume at middleweight. I don't remember who you mentioned, but eight strikes a minute against Curtis, 6.3 against Anders, 11.85 against Marquez. Uh, just looking fantastic. The only time he's been struggled, he struggled with landing was against Joe Piper, you know, obviously. And then uh, Fluffy Hernandez, he landed only two strikes a minute because he got taken down eight times and controlled for 74% of 12 minutes. So, yeah, long story short, not trusting Stolzfus. I'm thinking, like you said, is what you said is correct. Barrio might go under owned guys. He's not in the nine K range this week. I think uh, everybody's going to be on the lot or uh, even Jasmine. Um, and maybe some people think that uh, whoever the hell else was 91 is going to be up there too. But I think Barrio is going to be a little sneaky. My only issue is um, Stolzfus early can be a problem. So play a little bit of him in, in, in GPPs, but just, just a tad I'm on Barrio here. Let's move on. Let's talk about Kyle Machado and Brenson, uh, yeah, Brenson Ribeiro. Hibero, I guess. It be. Drop my R's for my Portuguese, Hibero. I'm sorry, <laughs> Carlos Leal. You got all mad. You know what? You know why you didn't get that decision, Carlos Leal? Because you were so pissed everybody was calling you Carlos Leal. Fuck you. But, but you did get robbed. That was pretty bad. Uh, Kyle Machado is minus 160. The comeback on Hibero is plus 135. Your DraftKings salaries on this one: Machado's eighty-five hundred, Habero is seventy-seven hundred. Fight ends inside the distance is minus two hundred. 
Monk, you get this one first. Finally, you get to lead off with one that should have some DFS goodness for us. This is a nickname battle. We got Bigfoot versus the Gorilla. I love this shit. Um, yeah, both of these guys have two UFC fights, both still looking for that ever-elusive first UFC win. Look, uh, Hibeto got absolutely demolished uh, by Ming, uh, Ming Yang there in the first uh, round, first two minutes. And then Gadzi Zulov was supposed to come out and finish him early, and somehow he lasted three rounds with him because Gadzi Zulov basically like cardio died but then was still able to get five takedowns and uh, some control time there and he better could not do anything against that so i don't know um i guess i'm picking machado but he's been very very um one track basically he's getting taken down he's getting knocked down he's landing five strikes a minute in fact in both fights he's landed exactly 76 strikes uh total in in 15 minutes so maybe we can expect that again uh, he's not going to score well. What are what are our salaries here? We've got eighty five and seventy seven. Man, this this technically does have some some DraftKings goodness, but I'm not confident in either side. I'm probably picking Machado because he better looked so bad against uh, Zhang Ming Yang, but he looked okay against Gazi Zulov. I mean, he didn't get killed. So by I mean he looked okay. He didn't get murdered. So I guess I'm picking Machado. This fight could suck, man. This could go three rounds and it could be a slow plotting Machado decision. And that's why I'm not overly excited for this one like I might be for the next one. So, kind of agree, kind of disagree. Um, I, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen in this fight. It, exactly. This, 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 this is two bad fighters. But it's yeah. two bad fighters who I minus 200 and then to the distance at middling salaries. It does have DFS goodness in it. Probably in the mid-range the third best behind the main event, Nashimental Romanov, and then it's probably this one. In fact, it is this one. So you have to play this fight. I'll lean towards Hibero because I, I think he's slightly less shitty because I don't think Kyle Machado is any good either, but he's cheaper too, so I don't fucking know. This is one of those where, luckily, yes, I'm an MMA analyst, but I'm also a DraftKings MMA analyst, and I can just say, play this fight. Don't play it in fucking cash games. Don't play no, it in cash no. games. Play it in GPPs. Load up on both sides. Move on about your day. Like right now, I think I'm planning for like forty percent Habero and thirty percent Machado, and those numbers bright. might even go up a little bit. Like there's there's pick a few spots of card. Like I'm picking the Mark Andre Barrio spot. Mm -hmm. Agree, disagree, but I, I highly recommend anybody ask me take at least you should take between three and five strong stands on a card. Like, like if, if I'm if I'm talking right now, let's you know maybe some segment we should do at the end. I start doing it. Otherwise, end. you're talking yourself into too much stuff. You got to have those stands, otherwise you'll never even get lineups built. Yeah, you, you can't play. You can't be too too vanilla. But I'm thinking, you know, if you're still you're listening, thank you. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think of this idea. I'm way in here. I'm thinking at the end of that we do the kill shots. We do like a five, and I do a little bit of you know prep beforehand. But I'm usually mm -hmm. waiting for you. So could do like. Five, five MM, you know, top five MMA or GPP strategies of the week, and I would probably rattle off on this one. It would probably be um, overweight Mark Andre Barrio, way overweight, you know, way overweight him, way overweight Jasmine Jasmine Vicious, mm -hmm. way underweight Yusuf Zalal. I would say all in the and then all in the Machado Habero fight, all in. The Nashimento Romanoff fight, even though I said not to all in on from making five, you know, pick five stands like that. Right. I might, I might do something like that just to lay it out at the end. Let me well, know what you guys it think. It gives you a good foundation. And then, you know, because if you start dicking with the optimizers too much, you can, you can, you know, you beat yourself you in submission in and kind of, you beat yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about the, not the co main event yet, but Derek, you know what? Fuck it. This is, this is the people's co main event. This is this is the one. There's it's Derek Lewis, Jahanada Denise, and actually, I don't know in my, my five GPP plays. I, I I needed to mention this. Did this disappear from my notes somewhere. Where did this fight go in my notes? Yeah, never mind. This is definitely the all-in fight rather than um, the Nashimento Romanoff one. It, it's this one. It's mm -hmm. it's it's Lewis Denise. Odds on this fight. Jahanada Denise is the favorite at minus 170. The comeback on Lewis is plus 145. Denise is 8,600. Lewis is 7,600. 
fight ends inside the distance is massive, minus um, 650. Inside one and a half rounds is minus 145 to minus 150. This one, is this is, is this one me first? I think it is, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, just play a shit ton of this fight. Similar to the last fight, but even more of it in terms of a break because it's minus 155 to end inside one and a half rounds. A one book that he's down, down to minus 150. Regardless, it's a big old number. Denise is more technical, high-level kickboxing experience. Lewis's UFC experience and freakish power. I know Denise is more technical. Lewis has got freakish power. Pick whichever side you want. Call me sentimental. Derek Lewis is cheaper. I'm going to lean on that side. More MMA training. Denise is a better striker, but you forget people. Have seen, you've seen Derek Lewis, you know, with vicious ground and pound. If he can get you to the ground, it's disgusting. Would not surprise me at all if he gets the knees down and finishes him that way. On the feet, Denise is more technical, but as we saw in the um, Alexander, not Romanov. Oh my God, um, Volkov, no, yeah. no, Russian. Yeah. Oh yeah, the last second. The Volkov the fight doesn't at any moment. He can finish you. So give me Derek Lewis, but load the fuck up on this fight. How about for you, Mark? Yeah, load up on it. Um, you're right. He's more technical. But as far as DraftKings go, and there's one glaring difference, but this is basically, you've seen Kramer versus Kramer. This is Lewis versus Lewis. It's two Derek Lewis's fighting each other, at least offensively. That's the main difference is defensively, Lewis's defense doesn't exist. And so far, Denise uh, allows half the amount of points per minute that Lewis does, literally 2.5 to five points a minute allowed by Mr. Derek Lewis. But both of these guys score like shit. Two points a minute. In fact, Lewis is under that. It's all or nothing for these guys. I don't have to go into it. Um, but the points per win is crazy low for these two, which is crazy. 72 points for Denise per win and 84.9 for Derek Lewis. But you got to play both sides because either one of them could go to sleep at any minute. Lewis has the shittier defense, like I said. But that doesn't matter because he's Derek fucking Lewis. So, yeah. Play both sides. Don't need to overanalyze this one. There is a small chance this goes all three rounds and is awful. There is a small chance of that, that would happening. Be, I kind of it would be fun to watch. There is a <laughs> chance of that happening here because I hate myself. Denise is so it. plotting and so slow, and yeah, I don't know. It would, it would be a little fun to watch. It'd be funny. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the co-main event: Aaron Blanchfield, Rose Namajunas. Blanchfield, minus 133. Still the favorite. Nama Yunus, the forum champ, plus 112. Fight goes to decision is minus 250. Your DraftKings salaries here. Nama Yunus is the dog at 7,800. Blanchfield, 8,400 for her. Monk, you go first. This is tough, man, because my gut feeling and everybody's is probably like, oh, Blanchfield. That's who I'm going to play. Look how cheap she is. Um, and she, you know, she scores well, 4.2 points a minute, uh, 4.81 inside the distance, and she allows less than one. Uh, just fantastic, 106 per win. But uh, she had real problems against Man and Fioro. She had oh, she real got, problems. She got champ checked. Against the uh, striker there. And Nami Yunus, uh, you know, while she does score 4.37 points a minute inside the distance, uh, she can also strike. She's on that head kicked fucking way uh Zhang Wei Li into another dimension. Um John Wei Li didn't know where she was for like 65 seconds. It was insane. Uh she's pulled off this shit over over other uh championship fighters as well. Never count her out. Uh also Blanchfield, when she lost to Fioro, gave up 107 freaking points in that one. This is a five-round fight. Uh, we should mention and somebody put that in the comments last week and i swear i checked uh with tapology i swear i checked that hamzat uh whitaker are fight on like monday and it said three rounds so maybe i'm just blind i don't know this one is for sure five i, I you got to play both sides because of it this is likely going to go to decision and we could have two decent scores if i'm stacking either this or the main event it's probably this one although i'm not saying to st to stack this one i'm saying if i'm have to and i'm picking one of the two five round fights it's probably this one to be honest i don't know who i'm picking yet i think this is a real 50 50 chance i think a lot of people are writing rose off i honestly don't know man rose has a 59 percent takedown defense that's the biggest issue here for the show i'll pick blanchfield 
but I'm probably going to have a, a good share of both both sides in this five rounder. Nami Yunus career three point seven strikes a minute, and what is? <coughs> excuse me. And Blanchfield is not much high. Uh, Blanche is five point four. I guess the men on Ferio fight had her more yeah, up in there, she but had to throw. Mm -hmm. I bet her accuracy is not very good though. I, I think Moreno's the one going to be pushing the pace in the main event, and I'd be more apt to stack the main than this one. Correct. Personally, um, don't love this fight for DraftKings, except that it's five rounds. Rose right. is fifty nine percent takedown defense. That was a rough launch for Bla loss for Blanchfield last time out. I'm curious, similar to Malata, how is she going to look this time coming out? I mean, everyone was talking about her wearing, wearing the title. I thought she was a title contender. Granted, Fiero, Fiero, oh, yeah. I thought it was going to be a tough matchup, but I mean, Blanchfield just Talia Santos leave the UFC, basically. Well, I know yeah. that's not what happened, really, but that's what it looks like. So we'll see what Blanchfield does here. She needs the takedowns, but against Rose, I think she gets them. That's why I'm going to pick her. That's why I think she's got more DraftKings upside. I think Rose is going to spend some time in her back on this one. And over five rounds, that is um, not good. So give, give me Blanchfield. Good fight because of the rounds. Last and, stat. The, yeah. I like that too. Blanchfield controls 95% of all the grappling time that is happening in her fights. 95% yeah. is again, crazy. Sarah Alpar, Miranda Maverick, JJ Aldrich. Still, with combine that, like you said, with Nami Yunus's 59% takedown defense. Yeah. It's definitely could be just back riding Sterling style here. It, it's it's definitely a worry. So, you know, she stopped nine of eleven against Carlos Sparza. Yeah. Mm, be curious to see what happens here, and I'm I'm worried the Rose is gonna you know make the the volume go down. You know, Tracy Cortez still took her down twice, two of five, and I think Blanchfield's a better wrestler. So agreed. Give me Blanchfield, and it's the rounds that make this DFS viable. And Blanchfield's got to be hungry. Got to be the hungrier fighter here, coming off that loss. All right, main event time. Brandon Moreno, Amir Albazi. Moreno is minus 175. Albazi is plus 150. Fight goes to decision is minus 190. We got five rounds of action here. Your DraftKings salaries. Moreno is 86, 8,500. Sorry, Moreno is 8,500. Albazi is 7,700. Look, Moreno's got good volume. Biggins had the big ghost decision number, mid range salaries. I think this is the stack fight to me. Abazi, incredibly lucky to win his last fight against Kai Kara France. I think most people scored it for, for, for Kara France, if I remember right. That was a bad decision. Dude, he outscored him by 21. Kara France outscored Abazi by 21 points before the fucking bonus in that. Yeah. Fight. It, it, was, it was bad. I, I think Moreno, look, Moreno's top of the division been there forever it's going to be a matter of how hungry he is because he's clearly it's going to be hard for him to get a title shot he just lost to Roy Val he's lost to Pinto he's coming off back-to-back -back losses mm -hmm. you know granted he was in what six straight title fights then the loss to Roy Val which was a split decision a close one speaking of he's his two losses though split decision losses to Pantoja and, and Roy Val yeah I think he is clearly leveled up here. As long as his motivation is there, I think Moreno's better everywhere. Striking can grapple like Brandon Moreno a bunch. Ton of this fight on, on DraftKings, clearly towards the Moreno side for me. Monk, bring us home. I want to play Albazi. I can't justify it. I just can't. His strength of schedule is dog shit compared to Moreno's, who is fantastic. Uh, and that's with all the UFC fights included, not just 14 of them against Figueredo. Um, yeah, and the, the worry is, Alba, did he have surgery? Why was he off for a year and a half? Do you know? Uh, he, a, he fought Kaikar France last July. Let's see. While you look, <coughs> excuse me, while you look that up, I'll, I'll just vamp a little bit. I, I just like Moreno. Like I said, I can't justify it. I think he's going to be the better fighter. Five rounds. Oh, he was supposed to fight Moreno in February when Moreno fought. Roy Val, and instead he pulled out of that fight because, um, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. 
I don't remember. Also, speaking of switch arounds, and I might have to look this up. Why did they switch around the opponents for the heavyweight fights? Oh, due to due to a neck injury, by the way. Okay. Uh, because I'm pretty sure on Tapology it says that Denise or Lewis was supposed to fight either Nasi Mento or Romanov, and Denise was supposed to fight the other one. But they it says Mad they were each fighter was rebooked. Well, they're both on this fucking card. Wasn't um, I believe I wasn't that a, no, no, I'm not sure. Yeah, I have no both idea. Both fighters rebooked. Yeah, because who was Lewis supposed to fight? Nasi Mento? Romanov. Romanov. Was to fight okay. Romanov. Yeah, and now it's just weird. I, I I don't know if I've ever seen that before, other than the clusterfuck that was the Hamzat missing weight by ten pounds, Nate Diaz, Kevin Holland thing. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Long, I don't know. I'm off topic. I like Moreno in five rounds. Albazi, I want to pick him, like I said, but his strength of schedule is shit. And honestly, this could be a real. Oh, you 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 leveled up. You think you've leveled up here? Well, Moreno might just put him in his place as far as that goes. I agree. Kai Car France, I think, won that fight. I'm going with Moreno. I think he probably doesn't break the bank with his score. I don't think he scores like 110, but at 8,500, you don't need that. Although Agreed. it would be nice. All right, guys. That's all 14 fights. Don't go anywhere yet, though. Not done. Got to do kill shots if you're not familiar. First of all, welcome to the show. Hit the like button if you're returning. Hit the fucking like button if you did not already. Share with your friends. A kill shot is typically an underdog play. Somebody unexpected to help you break the DraftKings slate. Take down a GPP. You have to know mine if you've been listening. Jack Shore. Everyone's all hyped up on Yusuf Zalal. I'm going to throw up the caution light just a second, and I'm going to take Jack Shore to get you a W at low ownership. Monk, who you got? Jesus, I honestly, I don't know. This is terrible. Um, There's a couple out there. Come on. I guess I hate Chad and Helliger. Petrovich, I can't do. Stolzfus, I can't do. De Silva, I definitely can't do. All right, look. Uh, one last time. Let's go with him. The fucking knockout king. I think he, you know, just for this show, I might pick Fred Flintstone to win because Janata Denise looks exactly like Fred Flintstone. Just be sure to remember that this week when you're seeing him fight. Exactly like him. Uh, but give me Derek Lewis to uh, punch the old Corey time clock of uh, Janata Denise here. And um, I guess we'll go Derek Lewis. There you He's go, got a guys. good shot as any first round finish. Let's go. There are the kill shots. All 14 fights broken down. Make sure you join us next week for UFC 309 from madison square garden i gotta tell you week for real it is is, i believe so isn't it i don't know that seems awfully quick turnaround for ufc you're probably right the google machine says oh no no you're right two weeks yeah next week Ooh, next week is fighting nerds carlos god i was trying to speak it into existence my bad i just want to get everybody excited Oh, I Bernardo honey. Sopage is alive. That's good to know. Thought his head came off when he took I, that I know what. Look, for years, years on this show, Ooh. I would tell Monk, and I would tell Monk, I would tell Geek, stop shitting on Neil Magny. I pulled off tons of Neil Magny upset picks. I'm a Neil Magny guy. Why the fuck is he main eventing a card in 2024? Because he's <laughs> going to get put on a platter for the fighting nerds, Carlos Praches. Is the third fight from the top Carolina Kovalkiewicz and Denise Gomes? They always mix this shit up. My whole order was out of the order. This whole courtroom's out of order. No, they no always... I don't I don't know, man. Tercio Sopage, GM3, and Reiner de Ritter. And if you don't watch other Ooh, promotions, Antonio you don't know Tricoli. who. Half the Albion people... Zaleski better be on the main card. That'll if be you, a good... Oh, if you don't watch other promotions, Albion. you have no idea who, who, who de Ritter is. Like, who is no Claudia idea. Segula? I don't know who that is. Oh my god! Uh, I, I might call it sick, and the next time you see, I him, wish you it was UFC, UFC 309. 309. Can we just talk about the fighting nerds, Carlos Praches, for an hour next week instead? God, I just am uh, saying I'm going to bring up fighting. I nerds realize people so can. Sh- I was sharing my screens. We're going going through the card there. Uh, so my apologies. Next <laughs> week is not UFC 309. Next week is um, Magni versus Praches. 
Oh, but so you know good. what? There'll be there'll be more money to make on DraftKings. Regardless, join us next week for that card, and in two weeks for UFC. Yeah. You didn't already smash the like button for Monk. I'm Sniper. Good luck in those contests. Let's cash all your lineups. Helmets up. We'll see you next time.